This is the Dumont Television Network. studies of a new planet, which we of the galaxy contemplate colonizing, are almost always studies of the atmosphere and of the temperature. Most are poisonous atmospheres, either steaming hot or impossibly cold, depending upon the planet's relative position to the sun. In the past 500 years, our scientists have conquered the atmospheres and the cold of the outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, by constructing tremendous atmosphere converters and heating units that have permitted Earth people to colonize these rich worlds. One of the principal scouting assignments of the Galaxy Bureau of Investigation is to check constantly the atmosphere and temperature as well as to test certain secret equipment in the units which only GBI personnel are authorized to know. Well, I finished my test for Pluto. There's some traces of methane getting back into the oxygen. Dangerous amount? Not yet, but it could become dangerous. We'd better order a converter repair team to check up on the secret GBI equipment. It's time for the check-in with Commander Richard Don Telling. Right. Gordon in Skyflash 2 calling GBI. Gordon in Skyflash 2 calling GBI. Let me talk to Commander Richards. Just a few inches more, Dr. Thompson. A few inches or a million miles. As long as I will it, you cannot move. That's funny. There's no answer in Richard's office. Well, it's not possible. There's always someone there, 24 hours a day. Captain Yeah, what's wrong? Gentlemen, I am Zydervine. The mad witch of Neptune. Yes. The mad witch of Neptune. That is what they called me before I was banished. How did you get in here? Into my office? Into the GBI? <laughs> As you said, Commander, I am a witch. Witches can go any place. Through walls, millions of miles through space. All the wave of their bond. Well, give me Dr. Zyphon. There's no answer Try Commander Richard's office again. Either you are an apparition projected into our minds and are not present in substance at all, or... Or, Dr. Zarkoff, how else would I enter into the inner sanctum of TBI without opening even a door? One moment. I'm not here. Next moment, I am. Oh, no, you don't. How did your scientific mind explain this? An apparition, as I said. Or you have discovered the secret of that duplication and projection. A secret known only to authorized DBI personnel, like the secret of the units that control the atmosphere converters on Neptune, Saturn, Uranus, Pluto. What about them? What do you know about the secret units? The keys, gentlemen. The keys. The keys? What are you talking about? 
my information is correct, each of you carries a very interesting little key. Together, put to proper use, these keys will cause the explosion of the remote control destruction unit of the atmosphere converter. Very interesting indeed. Destruction unit? You must be out of your mind. Why would we install a, a destruction unit in a machine designed to manufacture a life-giving atmosphere? There's a constant threat to each planet's government in case any one of them should go to war against the neighboring planet. You can destroy the aggressor's civilization by the turn of your two keys. Even if this were so, what does it have to do with you? You did remember I was banished from Neptune. Do you also remember I swore I would have my revenge? <laughs> I don't get it. Ten minutes and GBI communication still hasn't called us back. They haven't located Commander Richards or Dr. Zarko. I have a feeling something's happened. Inside of GBI headquarters? Come on, Dale. If there's one place in the entire galaxy that's safe, it's GBI headquarters. I know, but it's also a fact that Commander Richards' office is the nerve center of the galaxy. If he isn't there, someone must be. Someone must be there 24 hours a day. I mean that every living thing on Neptune shall die. If, if such a destruction unit existed, I'll bet, I'll just bet you'd carry out that threat. Fortunately for Neptune, there is no such unit. We, of course, we have no keys. <laughs> my hand, my hand is being forced into my pocket. Hands, Commander Richards and Dr. Zarko, to hold the keys to my revenge on Neptune. Give me a chance to, to intercede for you. I'll, I'll get you a full party. Neptune will allow you to return. Allow me to return. I shall return, all right. But only the ghosts of those who fancy me will be left to grief. Flash Gordon and Sky Flash 2 calling GBI. Flash Gordon and Sky Flash 2 calling GBI. Come in. What's the score on Commander Richards and Dr. Zarko? Look, that's impossible. Someone's got to be in Richards' office. I Wait a minute. Yes, sir. We'll be coming in for a landing on Neptune in ten minutes. Contact us at the GBI headquarters there. Okay, Captain Gordon. Okay, so it looks strange. But I tell you, nothing could have happened to them inside of GBI headquarters. I hope you're right. We're entering Neptune's landing channel. Okay, cut the landing speed. Right. Nothing, no one can resist my will. Neptunians, in a few seconds, every one of you will breathe a poisonous methane gas. And you will know that I, Zydri, have had my revenge. <laughs> Put in the keys. I command you. Now. Now.
Calling TBI Earth. Come in, TBI Earth. Calling TBI Earth. Come in, TBI Earth. Have you been able to contact TBI Earth? I can't, Gordon. I can't make contact. Explosion must have knocked down all the communication lines. Our teleradio transmitters are about a half a mile away from the converters. They must have been blown up, too. You know what this means? Yeah, for some reason, Dykoff and Commander Richards detonated the control bomb. But their only authority to do that can come from the Galactic Council. And then, only if Neptune has attacked another planet. But I don't understand. Five minutes ago, we were talking to GBI, and not a word was said about trouble with Neptune. What are we going to do? <laughs> Have you been able to contact them yet? No, we're absolutely cut off from all other planets. Tell the people not to get panicking to stay in their homes. In the meantime, alert the military and the police to watch out for all attempts to escape from this planet. It's going to be difficult, Flash. Everybody will be trying to get away. Well, all the spaceports will be watched by the military and the police. No one should be able to, unless we all can. Right. We've got to get back to Skyflash and contact GBI. We've got to find out what's going on. There's only enough oxygen for Neptune to last the population for about 48 hours. There aren't enough spaceships in the entire galaxy to evacuate a planet in that time. Well, come on, we've got a lot of work to do. Alert. Alert all military and police posts on Neptune. Alert. All military and police posts on Neptune. Alert. of Neptune, Zyderine, using a strange sort of electromagic, forces Commander Richards and Dr. Zarkov to detonate the methane to oxygen converter on Neptune. The powerful atomic bomb detonated by remote control from Earth completely destroys the converter and the pumping system. Panic spreads like wildfire throughout the Neptunian populace. Coincidentally, Flash Gordon and Sky Flash 2 calling GBI. Flash Gordon and Sky Flash 2 calling GBI. Emergency. This is an emergency. Come in. Now listen, listen carefully. We've landed on Neptune. Right after we set down, the methane to oxygen converters were blown up. Wait. Have any reports of Neptune attacking another planet been reported to GBI? 
That's all I wanted to know. For the next 48 hours, Dale Arden and I will stay here in Neptune and try to get the secret GBI auxiliary converter hooked into Central System. I'll talk to Mr. Richards as soon as we locate him. You'll probably find him and Dr. Zarkoff in converter detonation vault 3. You have served me well, gentlemen. You'll pay for this, Dinerine. I swear by all I hold sacred, you'll pay for this. Millions of lives for a petty revenge. Yes. It is not I who will pay for those millions of lives, gentlemen, but you. Yes, you. Sir, you don't think that they... Why, why would they do it? It must have been someone else. Only they have the keys that close the detonation circuit. In a few seconds I will vanish as I appear. But your mind will not remember that I was ever here. I am leaving you now. Forget. 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 Converted demolition vaults. Well, how did we get here? It would seem that all went as planned. In the last detail, Prostar, exactly as we planned it together all these years of exile. See them. Can you see them? Those miserable people of Neptune. Revenge is beautiful, Zyderine, when the wound is as deep as ours. Let us see what is happening on Neptune. And these are the facts, as straight as I can give them to you, people of Neptune. We have about 40 hours... Chief security, security scout of the GBI, Flash Gordon. For every available engineer and workman here on Neptune will be diverting the pipelines to the auxiliary converter emplacement. With your help, we can do it. Stay in your home. Don't exert yourself. Save your strength and your breath. Breathing in the last few hours will become difficult, but do not become panicky. Together we can do it. And remember, do not try to escape from Neptune. Even if every available spaceship in the galaxy were here, not one hundredth part of the population could be taken out. If one of us dies, all of us will. If one lives, we'll all live. And now let's go to work. Why didn't you tell me there was auxiliary equipment on that tube? I didn't know it. <laughs> it's the first I've heard of it. It was your job to know. I'm sending you to Neptune. Find the auxiliary equipment and destroy it before it can be used.
Dale, the auxiliary converter. This is a Galactic Council placed it over 200 years ago in a secret vault. How wise they were. How lucky for us. Well, then we've got a lot of work ahead of us, getting it in working order before the pipelines reach here. While I was telecasting to the people of Neptune, did you check on the pumping system? Yes. Stoner, the chief engineer, says he has about oh, enough standby pumps to take care of about 60% of the oxygen line. 60%? Well, but don't worry. The people in the areas that are not being covered are being evacuated to covered areas. Okay, but we don't have much time. We'll start popping those speed lines into those entries over there before we know it. Flash, do you... do you think we really can make it in time? We've got to. Save your breath. We'll need it. of the original one. That's wishful thinking, Flash. After all, Commander Richards and Dr. Zarkoff have practically admitted they blew it up. They've admitted nothing, except that they were found in the remote control demolition room, and their individual keys were in the Neptune locks. Look, you know I love them both. 
by next to you, they mean more to me than anybody else in the universe. But how can we fight such red-handed evidence? Uh, two points, Dale. First, neither Zarkoff nor Richards knows how he got to the vault. Second, neither one remembers putting the keys in and closing the circuit. I'm afraid no court would believe it. No, but we do. Now, if we can find out what made them go to the vault and what made them put their keys in and close the circuits, well, probably we can clear their names. And maybe he can give us the answer. No. But I tried. I did everything you asked. I know. I know. What's that all about? He seems to be talking to someone else. Bring me back. We can try again. Bring me back. Bring you back where? Where? Come on, talk. Bring you back where? signal he was wearing. You feel it. It has warmth and texture, just like human flesh. Yet it's metal, some kind of a strange alloy. It's a clue, Dale. If we can find out where that came from, perhaps we can find out who was really responsible for the detonation. Because you have failed. But it's not too late. Julie, now that we know where the converter is located, we can blow it up ourselves. You fool, you stupid, blundering fool. But we can do it, I tell you. Flash Gordon and the girl will be gone in a few minutes. And when they are gone, a radium ray will flood the entire installation. It will kill instantly anybody that enters its field. The witch of Neptune. Because I control the royal family. Because I was the power behind the throne. I was the ruler. You will rule again, almighty oh Zyderi. You bowed to me, kissed my hand. Everyone trembled when my name was mentioned. Yes, I will rule Neptune again. But this time I will be the queen. Ruler in name as well as back. The throne was here in my hand. It was you, your blundering stupidity, that ruined it all. Almighty oh, Zyderine, you have not lost. There is a way. A way for you to hold in your hands the power of the galaxy. What do you mean? You have thought to use all of this to conquer only Neptune. But why? Why merely Neptune? The machines you possess give you the power to control every planet in the galaxy. Yes. Yes. Every planet in the galaxy. I can penetrate into the most secret chambers of the galaxy. Through this, I am all powerful. In this, I have the strength of ten men. There is no knowledge, no secret in the universe I cannot gain. With this, my brain recorder. What do you make of it, Dale? Recognize any of the metals in that alloy? It has a tractosil base, but there are about seven other elements which I can't identify. Tractosil? That's a metal that's found on Saturn, isn't it? Yes. In small quantities on Pluto and Uranus. That narrows its origin down to three possible planets. Uh, wasn't 
wasn't this disc gray when we first landed on Neptune? Yes. It's turning black. And the insignia, which was black, is turning gray. I have been blinded by my desire for revenge, Prostar. I hold the power to control the entire galaxy. And you can, if first you destroy the Galaxy Bureau of Investigation. They have the knowledge that stands in your way. Then why destroy them, Prostar? They will serve me. First, I will record all the scientific knowledge possessed by Dr. Zorkov, the military knowledge of Commander Richards. That is the start, Prostar. Soon, soon, the mad witch of Neptune shall rule their galaxy. What do you make of it? Obviously, it's an alloy that's sensitive to some sort of emanation. The further away it is from the source of the emanation, the more the color changes. If that's true, when we get close to the right planet, the disk will turn toward white and the insignia toward black. It's even better than a bloodhound. As soon as we've talked to Dr. Zarkoff and Commander Richards again, we'll take off and let our little alloy bloodhound lead us to its home. I hope they're all right. How terrible it must be for them. Two men who have devoted their entire lives to loyal service to the galaxy, accused of the greatest crime they could commit. Impossible. They couldn't have escaped. I've been outside that door every second. But I swear there's no way they could have gone. I didn't leave my post outside that door for a second. Flash, what do you make of it? I can't believe that either Dr. Zarkoff or Commander Richards would try to escape. Try to escape? But where are they if they didn't? I don't know just now. But I've got an idea how I can find out. Come on, Dale. All right, but where to? Wherever this alloy bloodhound leads us. This is Guard Turbler, Special Post 5. Sound the red alarm. Dr. Zarkov and Commander Richards have escaped. Prisoners. Her tracrosyl alloy tracer disc is entering the Saturn field. Welcome, gentlemen. I hope the journey from Earth to Saturn was not too uncomfortable. Saturn? How can we be on Saturn when not 15 minutes ago we were in my office at GBI on Earth? A metal transmitter machine. Yes, this is it here. Matter transmitter? Yes. The elements of our bodies were broken down into electrical units and transmitted through space. When I appeared in your office, Commander, I focused this disk upon each of you. I see. The remote control projector for the matter transmitter. My improvement upon your own design of a one-way matter transmitter machine, Dr. Zarkov. My design? Why, that's impossible. That's top secret GBI information. Top secret. When I have need of information, I assure you there have always been ways of getting it. Just as you have served my purpose, so have others. We, Dr. Zarkov and I, have served your purpose. Ah, oh, yes, I forgot. The last time we met, I erased all memory of the meeting from your minds. Prostar, put the memory back into their minds. It is in the Electro Memory file under GBI Zarkov Richards. Zydering, the witch. 
witch of Neptune. It was you. You forced us to demolish the methane to oxygen converter on Neptune. Bring them here. Transported through a matter transmission machine to Saturn by Zyderine, the mad witch of Neptune, Commander Richards and Dr. Zarkov learn that it was she who forced them to blow up the methane to oxygen converter on Neptune. Sit down. Strap them in. little satisfaction when we know that millions of lives are lost. What happened on Neptune? Was anybody saved? Did they at least try to get the children out? I will answer you this way. My revenge is not complete. Zyderine, we warn you. You warn me? You, my prisoners, and on the outside the most wanted criminals in the history of the galaxy, you dare to warn me. No. You will serve me again. As I took from your minds every recollection of my part in your crime against Neptune, I will now take from your minds all of the knowledge they possess. Doctor, can she, can she do this? Certainly she can. The electronic brain recorder is an elementary device, the principles of which have been known for over a thousand years. Well, if you know how it works, you must know how to combat it. Only a psyllium headpiece can prevent the reading ray from entering the brain. I'm sorry, Commander. I don't happen to have one handy. The knowledge that she takes from us, it, it will still be in our brains. What about it? Do we retain our knowledge? No, Dr. Sarkoff. There is an eraser ray that follows the recorder ray as it passes over every inch of your brain. Zyderine, listen. You can't do this. Between us, we hold the knowledge upon which the safety of the entire galaxy depends. Exactly the information I want. Every morsel of it. The galaxy. What do I care for its safety? All I want is the power to make every living human bend to my will. Start the ray flow. I want to test. Settings at 8, 12, 1,000. A very simple setting for the commonest and simplest memory. What did you say your name is? Well, it's Richards. Paul Richards. Open the ray locks and record the setting, Prostar. a perfectly painless operation. And I still have my memory. Really? What did you say your name is? Why, it's... Uh, yeah. See for yourself, Dale. When we left Earth, the disk was coal black and the insignia clear white. It's as though we're at the halfway point. From here on, the disk should turn white and the insignia black. Halfway point. Let's see where we are now. 
If this is the halfway mark, I'll be able to figure out exactly where we're going. We should be about halfway through the asteroid belt. No, we're about three quarters of the way through it. At space point A, B, 12. Well, that means our destination is, uh... That. that is, if our little alloy bloodhound isn't playing tricks on us. That's all we've got to go on. It's our only possible either the whereabouts of Dr. Zarkoff and Commander Richards. I wonder where they are. And how they escaped, I mean, left GBI without being seen. How is it possible? Flash feel of it. Remember how warm it was before? As though it were a living thing? Yeah, now it's stone cold. It's as though something had been giving it warmth. And that something had been turned off now. A machine of some kind that controls this disk by remote control. Well, at least the color continues to change, which means that the machine hasn't been completely turned off. Yeah. Ready, Dr. Reed. 36. For A. 9. It's getting wider. Behind, we just passed Jupiter. We should be over Saturn in another few hours. And once we get there, the real job begins. With Saturn being as large as it is, it's going to be like looking for a grain of metal dust in the firmament to find out exactly where this alloy bloodhound roosts. And now, a brain recording of Commander Richards. The outer defense radar locations on planets, planetoids, and satellites. There it is. Saturn coming up on radar. At last. It's almost white. As we move closer, you can almost see it change. But where do we land? And where do we start looking when we do? I'm going to rocket break around the planet until we hit the atmosphere. Then I'll work into a series of landing break ellipses until we find it. Find what? The spot where the disk shows the clearest white. Hang on. for another turn. frequency machine of some kind. It's further down, I guess.
Talking to Commander Richards. Stay where you are. Don't move or I'll... Stop. It is I who give the orders here. That's what's wrong. I can't move my... My arms and... My legs. What are you doing? And what have you done to them? Emptied their minds of their identities, their past lives, and most important, every scientific and defensive secret of the GBI which they possessed. You're lying. They'd never give up that information. No, Let us see for herself. Commander Richards. Talk to me. What is it? Don't you know me? It's Dale. Dale Arden. Think. Think. Try to remember. All they ever knew is here, in this, an electronic memory file. Billions and billions of tiny electrical units, which I will transfer to my mind and use to gain the complete control of the galaxy. You are wasting your strength. No man can move against the power in this wand. Oh, stop him! Are you all right? Yeah, I'm okay, Dale. What about them? Their memory's gone. Their mind's a complete blank. Well, at least... At least we can clear their name. That's not enough, Dale. Somehow, some way, we've got to find that woman before she can use the knowledge she got from their minds to destroy the galaxy. Wherever she's disappeared to, I swear it, I'll find her. Let's see how they are. Right. I only hope and pray their minds haven't been destroyed. I don't think they have. Dr. Zarkov's reactions are perfectly normal. That's a relief. At least the minds can be brought back quickly. Commander Richards' reflexes are perfectly normal, too, thank heaven. In the meantime, maybe we can clear their names. I'm certain they were under the control of that mad woman when they destroyed the methane to oxygen converters on Neptune. Maybe our friend here can give us a clue. So that's who she is, a mad witch of Neptune. Where is she? What have you done to her? Hold it. One more move and you'll get another blast of stun gun. What have you done to Zyderene? When you're on the other end of a stun gun, you answer questions. You don't ask them. Now, was Zyderene responsible for the destruction of the methane to oxygen converter on Neptune? No one can resist the will of Zyderene. That's all I wanted to know. Okay, Dale, let's go. We'll take him back to GBI. We'll need him to testify. What about the machines? Shouldn't we destroy them? I will leave them the way they are. We may need them as evidence. Let's go. disc belongs to you, doesn't it? Yes, uh, I've missed it. It came off when we fought on Neptune. What's it for? 
Or nothing, nothing at all. It's the insignia of Zyderene, which all of her followers wear. I see. Well, since I'm not a follower of hers, I'll give it back to you. There's a lock in the back room. I just brought Prostar into the chart room for a little talk. Did you learn anything? Not yet, but I expect to. What's our latest position, Dale? We're coming into the home stretch. We're leaving Mars orbit and passing space point ME-12. How are you feeling? I'll get us all something to eat. Flash! He's gone! Who's gone? Prostar! His chains are empty. It's as though he has evaporated into thin air. That's exactly what he's done. What, what do you mean? Look, this is serious for Dr. Zarkoff and Commander Richard. Why? Why? Because he's the only witness who can clear their names. His testimony on how she used the electro wand and the matter transmitter on them is important. Relax, Dale. Our testimony in their condition will accomplish the same thing. In the meantime, Prostar's little disappearing act gave me an important bit of information. What do you mean? You're not making sense. I found out how he disappeared. And that knowledge, when the time comes, is going to be very important. Well, I know it's some sort of matter transmission, but how he did it from here and without a machine is beyond me. He did it with the tractor sealed disk. But he wasn't wearing a disc. We have his. We had it. I gave it back to him. You what? I gave it back to him. A relaxed day. Didn't you wonder why I didn't turn the matter transmitter machine off when we left Zyderene's laboratory? Well, you said you wanted things left as they were for evidence. What I really wanted to do was test a theory that the tractor seal discs act as a remote control conductor for the matter transmitter machine. Mm. If that's true, then it means that probably every one of those guards in the back room have disappeared, too. No, they haven't. Just because I let one chicken fly the coop to catch the fox is no reason I have to let the whole brood get away. Several weeks later, at GBI headquarters, Earth. Time for a meal break. How's the student doing? It's amazing how all the knowledge I had falls right back into place once I read a formula or look at a design. At the rate you and Commander Richards are going, you'll be ready to go back on duty. And here on Mimas, the first satellite moon of Saturn, are the radar negativizers powered by eight four-man GBI teams. Right, down to the last detail. And that takes care of the inner and the intermediate galaxy defenses. It's amazing how much knowledge and information you've absorbed in the last two weeks, Commander. Well, once I look at something, tell it to me. It's as though I always knew it. In another week or so, you'll be ready to take back your job and direct all GBI operations again. you and Dale finding Dr. Zarkov and me, and at the trial, without your testimony as to how Zyderine got us into her power, well, we'd have been defenseless. Now, Zyderine. <laughs> Now that yours and Dr. Zarkov's names are cleared, all of us have only one job to do. To find Zyderene and destroy the electro-memory file before she can... Gordon here. Captain Blander, Chief of the Krillium Fleet, calling in from Space Point S-95. Oh, put him on. 
Acrylium. Acrylium, what is that? It's the rarest, most powerful radioactive oil in the galaxy. Found only on the moons of Uranus. It's a power fuel. Each unit is 10,000 times more powerful and longer lasting than any other known power fuel. Amazing. A GBI fleet of special rocket ships goes in once a year and takes out the entire galaxy power supply for the year. Yeah, go ahead, Blander. We're in trouble. Some sort of ray has hit every one of our ships. It's come through the silly protective layers. We're starting to burn up. We can't take the heat. We've got to bring the ships down. How long can you stay up? Minutes. You've got to get armed help to them immediately. Someone is after that trillium supply. You're right, there is. This is Zyderene's first move to gain complete control of the galaxy. What do we do? You will do as I, Zyderene, command you. You will leave your ships and come to my castle, which you will see when you are on the ground. Who's that? They call me the Witch of Neptune. Do not try to escape. The solar ray guns are aimed at you every second. I'll give you five minutes to leave your ships and reach my castle. Captain Gordon? We're awaiting your orders. While the Krillium fleet burns in the solar ray controlled by Zyderene, she awaits Flash's answer to her command that the fleet land on Saturn. And now, Flash Gordon, I have a separate set of orders for you. I'm listening. As you've noticed, I've made excellent use of the memory file. The solar ray machine was built to the specifications I took from Dr. Zarkov's mind. It is unfortunate for you that GBI never built it. <laughs> It is the most powerful weapon in the galaxy. Aimed at Earth or any other planet, not a single living thing would remain after five seconds. What do you want, Zyderin? What are your orders? A very simple order. I want you and Dale Arden to come here immediately. Why? What do you want with Dale? I need her technical help for some of Dr. Zarkov's formulas, which are beyond my training in astrophysics. No, Flash. Dale can't go. Tell Zyderine that I will. We'll come, Zyderine. Dale Arden and I. I'll be looking forward to meeting you again, Flash Gordon. Twice you have interfered with my plans, but never again. You'll never have the opportunity again. I promise you. I'm confident that you'll do your best to keep that promise. Anything else before we leave, Zyderine? Just this. If you are not here before 24 hours, or if you try to trick me, one planet after another will be destroyed by Dr. Zarkov's solar ray. Is that clear? Very clear. Solar ray machine. A product of my brain. Flash and Dale are going to their deaths because of it. The entire galaxy will be enslaved by this maniac and all because I... No, it's not your fault. How can you blame yourself? You conceived it as a weapon to help strengthen the galaxy defenses. Of course it is, Paul. You've succeeded in finding a formula to harness the sun's power, whereas thousands of men have failed before you. Besides, Flash and I aren't through yet. Not by a long shot. We've got a lot of work to do before we take off.
Commander in Fleet Ship One, calling Gordon at GBI. Commander in Fleet Ship One, calling Gordon at GBI. Come in. You will leave your ships and come to my castle, which you will see when you are on the ground. William been unloaded from their spaceships? As you commanded, mighty Zyderene, queen of the galaxy. It is stored away in the lead vaults. Then why are they here wasting my time? I have work to do. He asked to speak with you. He is the leader of the fleet, so I thought perhaps he might have something important to tell you. It's about the Carillion. You must let me deliver to the galaxy power plants. Really? And why? Tell me why. You know as well as I do that the entire galaxy power supply depends upon it. Not only the electricity and the factories, but all the atmosphere converters on all colonized planets. Yes. The Carillium supply in most of the power plants is almost exhausted. I see. Interesting. <laughs> If you don't deliver the Krillium quickly, factories will close down, electricity will stop, and the atmosphere converters will stop converting. Is that it? Exactly. If it's a living galaxy you want to rule, you'll let me get that Krillium through. You fool! Don't you see I waited until the Krillium supply was dangerously low before I made my move against the galaxy with the most powerful weapon ever conceived, the solar ray? But with the solar ray, you can control everything. At will, you can destroy any planet who resists you. No planet will have the power or the means to resist me as long as I hold the Krillium. Not until my agents control every government direct every police force, will I free the Krillium supply. Put them in the dungeons. Have you given instructions to all our agents on all the planets? All is arranged, mighty Zyderene. They will take over just as soon as the Galaxy Council instructs the incumbent governments that you are the supreme ruler. And the Galaxy Council, when does it meet? Within 48 hours, in order to give the members of the outer planets time to reach Earth. All goes well, very well. In 48 hours, I, the Witch of Neptune, will be proclaimed Queen of the Galaxy. Or what this means. Kings have ruled nations, conquered empires, and uh, ruled planets. But I, Sidrene, have made the greatest conquest of all. The greatest domain in history is mine. I rule a galaxy. I have one fear, mighty Sidrene. Nothing must go wrong now. Now that success is so near. Nothing will go wrong. Forgive me, but the sooner Flash Gordon is here and in our power, the safer we will be. Gordon wouldn't dare to trick me. He knows full well that I would destroy every planet if he so much as tried. Bring him here on the matter transmitter. Let's not take chances. Only when he is shackled and locked in a dungeon can we be certain that... I do not share your fear, Polestar. You know, mental torture is a very effective weapon. It is a long journey from Earth to Saturn. <laughs> Captain Gordon will have ample time to wonder what plans I have in store for him. If anything should happen. Enough, Prostar. I'll do this my way. I want to give him plenty of time to think about my promise before I keep it. Saturn. So frightened. I've never been so frightened in my life. Turn on the landing signal, will you, Dale? 
Flash Gordon and Sky Flash 2 calling Zyderine. Flash Gordon and Sky Flash 2 calling Zyderine on Saturn. This is Queen Zyderine. We'll be coming in for a landing in a few minutes. I trust Dale Arden is with you. This is Dale Arden. You will be met by armed guards and brought directly to me. I'm happy to see you kept your promise, Gordon. I assure you, I am ready to keep mine. Spaceship are outside. What are your orders, mighty Zyderine? Bring them in. You know, they tricked me. Every living human in the galaxy will pay for this. Go. Turn on the solar ray machine to full power. There it is. Siderine's castle. Yeah. The decoys for Flash and Dale should be in there with her by now. Yes, it's exactly 12 minutes since they left us on the Sky Flash. The coast seems clear. Hmm. I'll give Flash and Dale the signal. They didn't take me seriously. They thought I didn't mean it. I'll show them. I'm the queen, queen of the galaxy. You're no queen, Zyderine. You're still the mad witch of Neptune. And from now on, you'll be put away in a place where you'll never be able to threaten the peace and security of the galaxy again. And that's my promise to you. Handy little gadgets, aren't they? One moment we're in the sky flash, and the next minute we're here. Now, Jeff, get down to the dungeon and release Blander and his crew, will you? Come on, let's get them out of here and into the spaceship. Aren't we forgetting something, Commander? What? What is it? It's an electronic memory file. You mean that's... That little box has all the GBI information in it that Zyderine took from us? Little box? After all, Commander, how big do you think your head is?
them. You must destroy the auxiliary equipment. We must have our revenge. You cannot stop now. Find them. Find them. Find them. blast is that? I've never seen him before. And why did he try to stop us from turning on the converter? You know, maybe it had something to do with the explosion of the original one. That's wishful thinking, Flash. After all, Commander Richards and Dr. Zarkoff have practically admitted they blew it up. They've admitted nothing, except that they were found in the remote control demolition room, and their individual keys were in the Neptune locks. Look, you know I love them both. Why, next to you, they mean more to me than anybody else in the universe. But how can we fight such red-handed evidence? Uh, two points, Dale. First, neither Zarkoff nor Richards knows how he got to the vault. Second, neither one remembers putting the keys in and closing the circuit. I'm afraid no court would believe it. No, but we do. Now, if we can find out what made them go to the vault and what made them put their keys in and close the circuits, well, probably we can clear their names. Maybe he can give us the answer. No. But I tried. I did everything you asked. I know. I know. What's that all about? He seems to be talking to someone else. Bring me back. We can try again. Bring me back. Bring you back where? Where? Come on, talk. Bring you back where? signal he was wearing. You feel it. It has warmth and texture, just like human flesh. Yet it's metal, some kind of a strange alloy. It's a clue, Dale. If we can find out where that came from, perhaps we can find out who was really responsible for the detonation. pray their minds haven't been destroyed. I don't think they have. Dr. Zarkov's reactions are perfectly normal. That's a relief. At least their minds can be brought back quickly. Commander Richards' reflexes are perfectly normal too, thank heaven. In the meantime, maybe we can clear their names. I'm certain they were under the control of that mad woman when they destroyed the methane to oxygen converters on Neptune. Maybe our friend here can give us a clue. So that's who she is, a mad witch of Neptune. Where is she? What have you done to her? Hold it. 
One more move and you'll get another blast of stun gun. What have you done to Zyderine? When you're on the other end of a stun gun, you answer questions. You don't ask them. Now, was Zyderine responsible for the destruction of the methane to oxygen converter on Neptune? No one can resist the will of Zyderine. That's all I wanted to know. Okay, Dale, let's go. We'll take him back to GBI. We'll need him to testify. What about the machines? Shouldn't we destroy them? I will leave them the way they are. We may need them as evidence. Let's go. disc belongs to you, doesn't it? Yes, uh, I've missed it. It came off when we fought on Neptune. What's it for? For nothing, nothing at all. It's the insignia of Zyderine, which all of her followers wear. I see. Well, since I'm not a follower of hers, I'll give it back to you. of Neptune, Zyderine, using a strange sort of electromagic, forces Commander Richards and Dr. Zarkov to detonate the methane to oxygen converter on Neptune. The powerful atomic bomb detonated by remote control from Earth completely destroys the converter and the pumping system. Panic spreads like wildfire throughout the Neptunian populace. Coincidentally, Flash Gordon and Sky Flash 2 calling GBI. Flash Gordon and Sky Flash 2 calling GBI. Emergency. This is an emergency. Come in. Now listen, listen carefully. We've landed on Neptune. Right after we set down, the methane to oxygen converters were blown up. Wait. Have any reports of Neptune attacking another planet been reported to GBI? That's all I wanted to know. For the next 48 hours, Dale Art and I will stay here on Neptune and try to get the secret GBI auxiliary converter hooked into the central system. I'll talk to Mr. Richards as soon as we locate him. You'll probably find him and Dr. Zarkoff in converter detonation vault three. You have served me well, gentlemen. You'll pay for this, Zydering. I swear by all I hold sacred, you'll pay for this. Before I keep it. There it is. 
Saturn. I'm too frightened. I've never been so frightened in my life. Turn on the landing signal, will you, Dale? Flash Gordon and Sky Flash 2 calling Zyderine. Flash Gordon and Sky Flash 2 calling Zyderine on Saturn. This is Queen Zyderine. We'll be coming in for a landing in a few minutes. I trust Dale Arden is with you. This is Dale Arden. You will be met by armed guards and brought directly to me. I'm happy to see you kept your promise, Gordon. I assure you, I am ready to keep mine. Spaceship are outside. What are your orders, mighty Zyderine? Bring them in. You know, they tricked me. Every living human in the galaxy will pay for this. Go. Turn on the solar ray machine to full power. There it is. Zyderine's castle. Yes. The decoys for Flash and Dale should be in there with her by now. Yes, it's exactly 12 minutes since they left us on the Sky Flash. The coast seems clear. Hmm. I'll give Flash and Dale the signal. They didn't take me seriously. They thought I'd... Good job. And direct all GBI operations again. finding Dr. Zarkov and me, and at the trial, without your testimony as to how Zyderine got us into her power, well, we'd have been defenseless. Now that yours and Dr. Zarkov's names are cleared, all of us have only one job to do. To find Zyderine and destroy the electro-memory file before she can... Gordon here. Captain Blander, Chief of the Krillium Fleet, calling in from Space Point S-95. I'll put him on. Krillium? Krillium, what is that? It's the rarest, most powerful radioactive ore in the galaxy. Found only on the moons of Uranus. It's a power fuel. Each unit is 10,000 times more powerful and longer lasting than any other known power fuel. Amazing. A GBI fleet of special rocket ships goes in once a year and takes out the entire galaxy power supply for the year. Yeah, go ahead, Blander. We're in trouble. Some sort of ray has hit every one of our ships. It's come through the silly detective layers. We're starting to burn up. We can't take the heat. We've got to bring the ships down. How long can you stay up? Minutes. You've got to get armed help to them immediately. Someone is after that Krillium supply. You're right, there is. This is Zyderine's first move to gain complete control of the galaxy. What do we do? You will do as I, Zyderine, command you. You will leave your ships and come to my castle, which you will see when you are on the ground. Who's that? They call me. 
be the witch of Neptune. Do not try to escape. The solar ray guns are aimed at you every second. I'll give you five minutes to leave your ships and reach my castle. Captain Gordon, we're awaiting your orders. While the Krillium fleet burns in the solar ray controlled by Zyderene, she awaits Flash's answer to her command that the fleet land on Saturn. What do you make of it, Dale? Recognize any of the metals in that alloy? It has a tractosil base, but there are about seven other elements which I can't identify. Tractosil? That's a metal that's found on Saturn, isn't it? Yes. And in small quantities on Pluto and Uranus. That narrows its origin down to three possible planets. Hey. Wasn't this disk gray when we first landed on Neptune? And the insignia, which was black, is turning gray. I have been blinded by my desire for revenge, Prostar. I hold the power to control the entire galaxy. And you can, if first you destroy the Galaxy Bureau of Investigation. They have the knowledge that stands in your way. Then why destroy them, Prostar? They will serve me. First, I will record all the scientific knowledge possessed by Dr. Zorkov, the military knowledge of Commander Richards. That is the start, Prostar. Soon, soon, the mad witch of Neptune shall rule their galaxy. What do you make of it? Obviously, it's an alloy that's sensitive to some sort of emanation. The further away it is from the source of the emanation, the more the color changes. That's true. When we get close to the right planet, the disk will turn toward white and the insignia toward black. It's even better than a bloodhound. As soon as we've talked to Dr. Zarkoff and Commander Richards again, we'll take off and let our little alloy bloodhound lead us to its home. I hope they're all right. How terrible it must be for them. Two men who have devoted their entire lives to loyal service to the galaxy accused of the greatest crime they could commit. I've been outside that door every second. But I swear there's no way they could have gone. I didn't leave my post outside that door for a second. Flash, what do you make of it? I can't believe that either Dr. Zyko... But I swear there's no way they could have gone. I didn't leave my post outside that door for a second. Flash, what do you make of it? I can't believe that either Dr. Zykoff or Commander Richards would try to escape. Try to escape? But where are they if they didn't? I don't know just now. But I've got an idea how I can find out. Come on, Dale. All right, but where to? Wherever this alloy bloodhound leads us. This is Guard Turbler, Special Post 5. Sound the red alarm. Dr. Zarkov and Commander Richards have escaped. She comes with the prisoners. Her tractor alloy tracer disc is entering the Saturn field. Gentlemen, 
I hope the journey from Earth to Saturn was not too uncomfortable. Saturn? How can we be on Saturn when not 15 minutes ago we were in my office at GBI on Earth? A metal transmitter machine. Yes, this is it here. Matter transmitter? Yes. The elements of our bodies were broken down into electrical units and transmitted through space. When I appeared in your office, Commander, I focused this disk upon each of you. I see. The remote control projector for the matter transmitter. My improvements upon your own design of a one-way matter transmitter machine, Dr. Zarkov. My design? Why, that's impossible. That's top secret GBI information. Top secret. When I have need of information, I assure you there have always been ways of getting it. Just as you have served my purpose, so have others. We? Dr. Zarkov and I have served your purpose? Ah, oh, yes, I forgot. The last time we met, I erased all memory of the meeting from your mind. Prostar put the memory back into their minds. It is in the Electro memory file under GBI's Arkoff Richards. Zydere, the witch of Neptune. It was you. Some sort of ray has hit every one of our ships. It's come through the silly detective layers. We're starting to burn out. We can't take the heat. We've got to bring the ships down. How long can you stay up? Minutes. You've got to get armed help to them immediately. Someone is after that trillium supply. You're right, there is. This is Zydarine's first move to gain complete control of the galaxy. What do we do? We will do as I, Zydarine, command you. You will leave your ships and come to my castle, which you will see when you are on the ground. Who's that? They call me the Witch of Neptune. Do not try to escape. The solar ray guns are aimed at you every second. I'll give you five minutes to leave your ships and reach my castle. Captain Gordon, we're awaiting your orders. the Krillium fleet burns in the solar ray controlled by Zydarine, she awaits Flash's answer to her command that the fleet land on Saturn. You have no choice, Flander. Follow our orders. Good luck. And now, Flash Gordon, I have a separate set of orders for you. I'm listening. As you've noticed, I've made excellent use of the memory file. The solar ray machine was built to the specifications I took from Dr. Zarkov's mind. It is unfortunate for you that GBI never built it. It is the most powerful weapon in the galaxy. Aimed at Earth or any other planet, not a single living thing would remain after five seconds. What do you want, Zydrine? What are your orders? A very simple order. I want you and Dale Arden to come here immediately. Why? What do you want with Dale? I need her technical help for some of Dr. Zarkov's formulas, which are beyond my training in astrophysics. No, Flash. Dale can't go. Tell Zydarine that I will. We'll come, Zydarine. Dale Arden and I. I'll be looking forward to meeting you again, Flash. The military knowledge of Commander Richards. That is the start, Star. Soon. Soon, the mad witch of Neptune shall rule their galaxy. 
What do you make of it? Obviously, it's an alloy that's sensitive to some sort of emanation. The further away it is from the source of the emanation, the more the color changes. If that's true, when we get close to the right planet, the disk will turn toward white and the insignia toward black. It's even better than a bloodhound. As soon as we've talked to Dr. Zarkoff and Commander Richards again, we'll take off and let our little alloy bloodhound lead us to its home. I hope they're all right. How terrible it must be for them. Two men who have devoted their entire lives to loyal service to the galaxy, accused of the greatest crime they could commit. Impossible. They couldn't have escaped. I've been outside that door every second. But I swear there's no way they could have gone. I didn't leave my post outside that door for a second. Flash, what do you make of it? I can't believe that either Dr. Zarkoff or Commander Richards would try to escape. Try to escape? But where are they if they didn't? I don't know just now. But I've got an idea how I can find out. Come on, Dale. All right, but where to? Wherever this alloy bloodhound leads us. This is Guard Turbulent, Special Post 5. Sound the red alarm. Dr. Zarkov and Commander Richards have escaped. Prisoners. Her tracer alloy tracer disc is entering the Saturn field. Welcome, gentlemen. I hope the journey from Earth to Saturn was not too uncomfortable. Saturn? How can we be on Saturn when not 15 minutes ago we were in my office? In Skyflash 2 calling GBI. Gordon in Skyflash 2 calling GBI. Let me talk to Commander Richard. A few inches or a million miles. As long as I will it, you cannot move. That's funny. There's no answer in Richard's office. Well, it's not possible. There's always someone there 24 hours a day. Yeah, what's wrong? Gentlemen, I am side of him. That which of Neptune. The mad witch of Neptune. That is what they called me before I was banished. How did you get in here? Into my office? Into the GBI? <laughs> As you said, Commander, I'm a witch. Witches can go any place. Through walls, millions of miles through space. All the wave of their bond. Well, give me Dr. Zyko. There's no Try Commander Richard's office again. Either you or an apparition projected into our minds and are not present in substance at all, or... Or, Dr. Zarkov, how else would I enter into the inner sanctum of TBI without opening even a door? One moment. I'm not here. Next moment, I am. How did your scientific mind explain this? An apparition, as I said. Or oh, you have discovered the secret of 
That is duplication and projection. A secret known only to authorized CBI personnel? Like the secret of the units that control the atmosphere converters on Neptune, Saturn, Uranus, Pluto? What about them? What do you know about the secret units? The keys, gentlemen, the keys. The keys? What are you talking about? If my information is correct, each of you carries a very interesting little key. Together, put to proper use, these keys will cause the explosion of the remote control destruction unit of the atmosphere converter. Very interesting indeed. Destruction unit. You must be out of your mind. The nerves are about a half a mile away from the converters. They must have been blown up, too. You know what that means? Yeah, for some reason, Dykoff and Commander Richards detonated the control bomb. But their only authority to do that can come from the Galactic Council. And then, only if Neptune has attacked another planet. So I don't understand. Five minutes ago, we were talking to GBI, and not a word was said about trouble with Neptune. What are we going to do? <laughs> Have you been able to contact them yet? No, we're absolutely cut off from all other planets. Tell the people not to get panicky and to stay in their homes. In the meantime, alert the military and the police to watch out for all attempts to escape from this planet. It's going to be difficult, Flash. Everybody will be trying to get away. Well, all the spaceports will be watched by the military and the police. No one should be able to, unless we all can. Right. We've got to get back to Skyflash and contact GBI. We've got to find out what's going on. There's only enough oxygen on Neptune to last the population for about 48 hours. There are not enough spaceships in the entire galaxy to evacuate a planet in that time. Well, come on, we've got a lot of work to do. Alert. Alert all military and police posts on Neptune. Alert. All military and police posts on Neptune. Alert.
The Mad Witch of Neptune, Zyderine, using a strange sort of electromagic, forces Commander Richards and Dr. Zarkov to detonate the methane to oxygen converter on Neptune. The powerful atomic bomb, detonated by remote control from Earth, completely destroys the converter and the pumping system. Panic spreads like wildfire throughout the Neptunian populace. Coincidentally, Flash Gordon and Sky Flash 2 calling GBI. Flash Gordon and Sky Flash 2 calling GBI. Emergency. This is an emergency. Come in. Now listen, listen carefully. We've landed on Neptune. Right after we set down, the methane to oxygen converters were blown up. It is I who give the orders here. Flash, what's wrong? I can't move my my arms or legs. What are you doing? And what have you done to them? Emptied their minds of their identities, their past lives, and most important, every scientific and defensive secret of the GBI which they possessed. You're lying. They'd never give up that information. Let her see for herself. Dr. Zarkov. Commander Richards. Talk to me. What is it? Don't you know me? It's Dale. Dale Arden. here in this an electronic memory file billions and billions of tiny electrical units which i will transfer to my mind and use to gain the complete control of the galaxy you are wasting your strength no man can move against the power in this wand oh stop him them. Their memory's gone. Their minds are complete blank. Well, at least, at least we can clear their name. That's not enough, Dale. Somehow, some way, we've got to find that woman before she can use the knowledge she got from their minds to destroy the galaxy. Wherever she's disappeared to, I swear it, I'll find her. How they are. Right. I only hope and pray their minds haven't been destroyed. Think that they. Why, why would they do it? It must have been someone else. Only they have the keys that close the detonation circuit. In a few seconds I will vanish as I appear. But your mind will not remember that I was ever here. 
I am leaving you now. Forget. 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 Converted demolition vault. Well, how did we get here? It would seem that all went as planned. The last detail, Prostar. Exactly as we planned it together all these years of exile. See them. Can you see them? Those miserable people of Neptune. Gasping for air. Beautiful. Beautiful. Is it not, Prostar? Revenge is beautiful, Zydarine, when the wound is as deep as ours. Let us see what is happening on Neptune. And these are the facts, as straight as I can give them to you, people of Neptune. We have about 40 hours. Chief security, security scout of the GBI, Flash Gordon. Every available engineer and workman here on Neptune will be diverting the pipelines to the auxiliary converter emplacement. With your help, we can do it. Stay in your home. Don't exert yourself. Save your strength and your breath. Breathing in the last few hours will become difficult, but do not become panicky. Together, we can do it. And most important, every scientific and defensive secret of the GBI which they possessed. You're lying. They'd never give up that information. No, sir. Let us see for herself. Dr. Darko. Commander Richards. electronic memory file, billions and billions of tiny electrical units 
which I will transfer to my mind and use to gain the complete control of the galaxy. You are wasting your strength. No man can move against the power in this wand. Oh, stop him! Are you all right? Yeah, I'm okay, Dale. What about them? <laughs> 